Internets, I'm so excited for you to listen to this episode. It's a gem, trust me. But right now, I want to take a moment and send our prayers and blessings to all the families that have been affected by Hurricane Harvey in Texas. Also, Hurricane Irma across the world. People that just been devastated. You know, I feel like every day we complain about things and they may be minor to what these people had to deal with and are still dealing with. You know, um, I want to announce something. Me, along with Bun B and Healing Souls and my good friends at OSD Live put together a donation that you can ship, you know, socks, sneakers, clothes, anything that you want to ship. I want you to send it to the Church at Bethel's Family. Again, that's Church at Bethel's Family. You're going to put care of Bun B, OSD Live, Healing Souls, Premium Pete Show. The address is 14442 Fon Meadow Drive. That's F-O-N-M-E-A-D-O-W Drive. Houston, Texas, 77035. Again, like I said, if you want to donate any clothes, shoes, sneakers, socks, I know that this church is a church that Bun picked that people directly could get the items that they need. And again, all of us here at the Premium Pete Show send our prayers and our blessings to all the families affected from these hurricanes. Not only Harvey, Irma, and we just want to keep you in our prayers and let you know that we send our love. Um, I want to get, before we get to this episode, I want to go over... Um, Recently, I just had a great father, daddy, daughter moment. Went to Made in America with my daughter. And um, it was really an experience. You know, I I, I look at it like, uh, I remember telling my mother, I was like, I took this girl to Hannah Montana, to Selena Gomez, to Barney, to, to uh, you know, Disneyland. And this past weekend, I was in the mosh pit in the middle of all these young kids turning up to a boogie. The Migos, Cardi B, I got elbowed in the head. Crazy thing is, I was watching my daughter like a hawk to make sure that she was okay. You know, people bumping into her, people like elbowing. I got elbowed, you know. And people like, my bad, I didn't mean to hit your girl or I didn't mean to bump your girl. I'm like, that's my daughter. So then all of a sudden I got labeled the cool dad, even though my daughter doesn't think that. But let me tell you something, man. I was in the middle of that crowd and it was pouring rain, soaked and I really, I really just had a moment where I looked at my daughter and I said to myself, man, you know, time flies. And that's why you must enjoy every moment that you have. Because here's a girl that I took to build a beer. And now I'm taking her to Made in America. And one thing I really valued was that she didn't want any of the VIP access I could get. She wanted to be in the middle of that crown, turning the fuck up. You know, minus the Molly. I told her, you're never doing that shit. There was kids there fucking rolling there with their eyes rolling drunk. I was like, don't be like that. Don't be like that. And she was like, nah, nah, I'm going to be myself. And I was really proud to hear that. And it really was a great daddy-daughter moment because anybody out there with parents, I want you to understand your kids, every level changes of age. And I really feel like, you know, I used to say this and, and I'm not, though. I used to say like, I'm losing my daughter, but I'm not. But you know, things are changing. You don't do the same things. And pretty soon she's going to go to college and, you know, we're not going to hang out every day, you know, and it's not going to be the same anymore, but it's new beginnings and new things to do. But man, as a father, man, just being in there, I'm like, you know, like I never, like when I was growing up, my father, like, you know, I love big and I love Jay. Like, I don't think my father would be in the middle of that concert like that. So to be able to do that with her was special, man. I, I really enjoyed it, man. And, uh, you know, I, I suggest that whatever you do, like I said it before, my, you know, growing up with a daughter, I, I didn't know really what to do. I want, you know, I, I figured if I had a son, you know, I could go to a basketball game. Or, you know, she didn't want to do all that. So instead of just, you know, fighting it, I embrace it at a young age. So I'm excited that I, I, I trained myself. You know, I used to go to a nail salon and, and instead of like just watching her get her nails done, I would get a pedicure. Fuck that. You know, got to keep your feet clean. Don't be out here with them stanky fucking toenails, man. But anyway, listen, Internets, this episode that's coming up right now is a really dope episode, man. I really feel like I want to do more of these where you find stories of people who turn, their, t- turn, you know, turn something that was nothing into something, turned a, 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 a vision or something in the family or something that just 
hangs around your family or friends into a multi-million dollar business. Also, somebody who just never gave up. And like I said, the premium peach show is, is, is many things. You know, you'll have artists, you'll have athletes. You know what I mean? You'll have, you'll, you'll have music. Different to, everybody from every different type of walk of life. But more importantly, we always need to not only hear stories, but find out things to inspire us. Because shit ain't easy. So listen, I present to you a great episode. We're going to get to this episode. Make sure you uh, um, find some socks or clothes and box it up and send to that address. If you didn't remember that address, you can just go on my Instagram. I posted it there. And listen, at the Premium Pete Show, at Premium Pete, let me know what you... We know when I tell you to check in. Check the fuck in. I don't care where you're from. If you're from fucking Japan or fucking Brooklyn, check in. Let me know what's going on. And, uh, you know, let me know what you're thinking of the fucking show. Let me know who you want to see on the show. And on the SoundCloud, comment on the SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. And I think I mentioned it before, but I'm so excited that the Premium Pete Show is now available on Spotify. Okay? Fucking Spotify. You understand what I'm saying? It's a beautiful thing. We're also on Facebook. Anyway, listen, enough of me fucking talking. Okay? Subscribe, rate, tell a friend to tell a friend. Premium Pete, let's get to the show. Come on, everybody, get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want the scoop in the low, down low. Listen to the show, cause milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. It's the Premium Pete Show. Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. We're on the road. I'm in Cambridge, Boston, Massachusetts. I don't even know if that even makes sense, but but that's where I'm at. I'm in Boston, okay, and and I'm out here with the lady. Went to go visit one of her friends, and there's been an interesting fellow that I know for quite some time that I want to sit down with. Um, his name is Mr. Travis Grillo, but more importantly, this guy, in my opinion, took a, a pickle business into an enterprise and still has a lot to do. And I feel that, like in anything we do, in episodes that we have had. Over time, I want people to be inspired. I want people to learn something. I want people to understand the hard work it takes to put in to accomplish something, the ups, the downs, the successes. Anyway, listen, I welcome to the show Travis Grill. Travis, welcome. Pete, thanks for having me. Oh, man. man, it's, 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 I, I can't <laughs> wait to tell this story because I find it so interesting. Yeah. Um, first off, let's take it back. You know, you grew up where? I grew up in Connecticut. I mm-hmm. uh, went to school. C- went to school at CCSU in mm-hmm. Hartford, New Britain, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, n- first one out of my whole family to go to college. So now, is that is, was, was that was that like, like it was like a rebellious move? It sounds funny, right? Like your parents want you to go to college, but when you grow up an Italian strict family kind of thing, they want you to just go to work, start flipping doughs, uh, you know, something something low key. something to do for the next 40 years <laughs> yeah, something to do retire to and then and die yeah yeah so um you know i grew up in a in an area where my dad gave me my family my family let me learn my own lessons so i definitely grew up what do you mean by that when you say your family let you learn you know you go out come home safe that was it and mm-hmm. you know you you can you can get mixed up with the wrong crowd and the wrong things and but uh, what i've learned now that being a business owner is like the people you hang around with, good or bad, you learn from everyone. And that's like the key to success is like never eliminate your homie that you knew that did something wrong, but he might have taught you the most valuable lesson of your life mm. if you mm. if you apply it in a different way. So with Grillo's, it was like growing up in a, a neighborhood where my dad worked, my mom worked, had a free time, a lot of mischief took place. So um like I was telling you, had a date <laughs> and uh, t- got arrested stealing sneakers, just trying to impress someone. But that's a lesson it's, learned, and that's you know? because you you didn't have the money to buy. I didn't it. have the money, and and, and, uh, and what were your kicks uh, fucked up or yeah, dirty? You know, you want to impress somebody, or you want to sure. do something sure. to uh, you know impress a girlfriend in a young age, and you want to look fly for your first date. You do stupid things, but things like that that happen when you grow up. When things aren't privileged, it makes you work harder. Sure, so I'm blessed. To have grown up the way I have and not been a, you know, uh, privileged from the gate. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, pops and moms—they were born here. 
Yep, pops and moms were born here. My uh, great grandfather immigrated from Italy, mm-hmm. and uh, they built car batteries. So they're basically real hardworking men. Built car batteries. Yeah, that's that's yeah. crazy to think. My of grandfather that. with like you know missing fingers from batteries blowing up, messing with lead and all that, building them. So like old old hard work um, instilled right um, from the beginning of Grillos and. You know, when I started that pickle cart in the Boston Common. Wait, we got to get to that. So let me yeah. tell you. So, so there's a friend of mine and a friend of ours, uh, yep. Dennis Tedisco. Shout out Shout to Dennis. Out Dennis. You know, uh, he put me on to you. And what he told me years ago that was really inspiring to me. And, and the crazy thing is I didn't even know we would be here today or where, you know, Grillo's Pickles would, would go. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I remember him telling me, like, yo, there's this dude who has a pickle cart outside of a Boston corporate office in downtown, right? Yeah, Park Street. And, and Park Street. The crazy thing about it is I never heard of that meaning a pickle cart. Like, I heard of hot dog carts. I mean, we, yeah. we could still go back even more, but take us to the day. Like, yeah. what made you make a pickle cart? So uh, we can go back a second where I was going to work for Nike. Yeah, let's know. tell that story, actually. So, you know, Nike was something out of college. You think you get out of college. And what college and you went to? I put myself through CCSU. I signed every loan doc they could give me. I basically went there and said, literally, front row office, like, how do I get into college? I got nothing other than my signature, financial aid, whatever you got. Just signed a bunch of papers blindly, and they, fuck, I had a room. It was like, shit, this was easy. A room filled with people in college and girls and parties. And But after a while, you realize if you don't do good in your grades, you, you're you nothing. You get kicked off campus. So there's all these consequences that college teaches you. So and it's not for everyone. And you, If you want it, you can do it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, you know, I don't recommend it to everyone. And what would you say that you learned from college? Cause I, feel I like- learned from college. Um, I went to college for myself. So being an artist, I spent a lot of time with the arts. And I did a lot of sculpting and, and like using the facility. So I always made it sound like I used college. Like I was there for five years. Um, I probably could have finished in less. But, you know, I wasn't a straight-A student either. Um, but I was... Take, like I said, I was always picking and choosing where to learn things from the professor to the guys in the football team to the art room to like everyone I d- dealt with. It was like inspirational to see how everybody got to this one place called college. And I saw a lot of kids waste it. And those were the privileged kids that they were supposed to go there. So they were the ones that, you know, um, you see sometimes failing and uh, not doing well. So. so many times people come out of college and don't know what to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. When you were graduating college, you knew what you wanted to. You wanted to work for Nike. I wanted to work for Nike, and, and I got and out. So how'd you go about that? I got out. Um, I was doing some um, work with um, Puma for a second, not not long at all. Like I said, I went for an internship. Uh, they ended up not doing the internship, so I was only there for a couple of days. And I was like, man, this is a weird industry. So I went, applied for Nike through a friend, Kurt Collins. Um, I don't know if he's still with the company, but he got me in the door. Um, with an interview, did good, did another interview, Manhattan interview, flew me all the way to Den, uh, I mean to um, Portland. So I was in Portland for four days at headquarters. They had a car. You know, first time you show up to the airport, you have a car. You're like, man, I got this job. I got mm, a brand new mm. car. This is crazy. You know, out of college. College really paid sure, off. Sure. Thinking life is good, right? Uh, long story short, get back, didn't get the job. That summer, I was eating these pickles that my dad made my whole entire life. This isn't no secret to the family. It was a secret to the streets, right? No one's tried it other than family and friends that were close to me. So I was eating it, and that old school light bulb, I swear to you, Pete, it went off, and I ate, took a bite of it. And I said, wow, I was just reading a book about Bare Naked Ganola, a, a, a ganola company that sold for like $100 million, and they were just some teenagers. And I'm thinking to myself, Man, I'm about to sell these pickles. And everybody just laughed. They're like, you smoke it, cuz. Get out of here. And I'm like, no. I'm going to sell these pickles. And everybody said, wow. And I uh, literally started bagging them up, well, jarring them up that that night. And, and what made you decide to call them Grillo's Pickles? Is that because you... I mean, obviously, it's your last it's my name. La- it's my uh, last name and suggestion to anybody open a, a business, don't call it by your last name t- 10 why years is that? later. Ah, you got Grillo's calling you all over the country now that supposedly know you and want to know you, who are you, you, you know, my uncle, my brother knew this one. It's just, it's like, you know, I know who I know who's a Grillo and you know me if you know me type mm, of thing. Mm. Um, 
But so you start bagging them up. I started bagging them up, and I started treating Grillos as any other product you would hit the streets with. I don't care if you're the guy selling stereos out your back trunk. I don't care if you're the guy doing this, doing that. I don't care where you've seen it, but that's all I knew was like, how do I get people to buy these? I, I don't have any way to get into a store right now. So I started driving around in my Cutlass. I had an 85 Cutlass Supreme Classic at the time. Two-door, uh, two door, two-tone, blue, and, blue, and, uh, blue, ice blue. It was sick. And uh, loaded up the coolers, put them in the back of the trunk, and just started driving to ballparks, basketball field, any, a- anywhere I could just see groups of people. What, what was people's first reactions when they seen a, a, a... I mean, is this when you had the cart or just this you? Is, this is pre-cart. Um, I did it out But how did car. people know you had pickles? You were telling them? I, I, yeah, for about but, for about four months, I would sell them like just door-to-door out my car, baseball But course. that wasn't like weird for people like, yo, I got pickles. It was pickles. very weird, but it, the way I did it, if, you, if you, you've known me, you met me personally, like I feel like I'm just... So what was your... Well, explain what you I did. I'd be like, hey, man, what's going on, man? My name's Travis... Oh, I got some fresh made Italian pickles. I'm trying to get this brand off the off the streets. I'm trying to get into supermarkets. They're seven dollars. All the money's going right back to growing this company. And people would try them, and I let people try them. And um, one of my buddies, Chris Drain, shout out to Chris Drain. Um, he was dating a girl at the time in Boston, and she had worked for the Boston Boys and Girls Club. And at the time, they ran all the vending carts in Boston. That's how they got money. So she put me on to a spot, and she said, listen, if you can get a health permit, I can get you a spot. But you got to get a health permit, and that's impossible. And I said, yeah, all right, we'll see. So we built a wooden pickle cart <laughs> and uh, filled it up with uh, ice and coolers and brought it to 1010 Mass Ave and they li- I've never seen women laugh so hard. I pull up and they come down to look at the cart because they have to come down to inspect it and they just start laughing. And I'm kind of straight-faced because it took me a long time to get this cart down to 1010 Mass sure, Ave. Sure. I had to get it in a van. I had to... It was like a struggle. They start laughing and they said, oh, it's so cute. And I started laughing. I'm like, yeah, it's cute, all right. I'm like, well, can we sell out of it? And she's like, listen, you won't last a week down there, so we're going to give you the pass. And I said, okay, thank you. I got the pass. And the next thing we were worried about was, like, just being out there, right, because it's a new thing. Um, Vending is kind of tight in mass. It's owned mostly by, like, people... Veterans years ago, veteran, yeah, people that have been selling the hot dogs and the cotton candy and the fried dough their whole life. So you kind of stepping on turf. How was people's reactions when they seen this cart? When I rolled out the cart, the the first reaction was laughter. It was it was kind of like, um, what do you mean a pickle cart? Don't understand. Two How sp- much were the pickles? Two spe- two spears for one dollar. And 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 just it was regular type regular pickles. Italian dill. The, the traditional one that got us mm-hmm. famous. So it was a little bit in the bit first, the first few days. It was a little. How much bit did you on, make the first few days? Oh, a couple of dollars. Like, and then it was like ten dollars. And then we started getting lines. And then we started. And this was when Twitter just started. So Twitter helped me grow this business. Instagram wasn't even invented. So, but you were outside of a building. Yeah. That had what inside? Uh, Car no, Loop. Outside of a Park Street T stop. So it's a T area where people are coming in off the train, and then across the street was like Burger King, Best Eaten. Your just your conventional stores okay. right on, right in the center of Park Street, downtown Boston. So high volume area. Um, but let's go back and say, well, I knew what I was doing out there. I knew I wanted to get laughed at. I knew I, I needed to, I need, I needed to do something that people thought it was odd. And I think being odd and being out there in the rain, I used to sell ponchos in the rain in a pickle suit. Wait, so you, you literally were in a pickle suit or you? No, I would wear a pickle suit and sell ponchos in the rain on rainy days because the news would come by. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it was like all these bloggers. And then, what happened was Whole Foods, somebody was in a line, because I used to have a line during lunchtime. So it started to get busy. Yeah, it started getting real busy. Them, them, them $10, $20 days, and let, literally a month later, they were turning into like $100 days, $150 days. Then we got to $400 days at some days. And then um, Whole Foods found us, like I said. But how, but how did, go ahead. You can't just say Whole Foods found well, us. Well, no, no, all right. Yeah. So yeah, if I'm in, I'm in uh, somebody was in the line. 
in in Park Street and tasted the product, and then I got a phone call. But you didn't even know that was like a no a, a no. person who worked no, with the no one Whole approached Foods. me. Uh, the only first people who approached me were attorneys mm-hmm. in suits and some venture capital guys, like small money, like. It, 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 be, it became known to me inside that I had something really, really quick, right? It, it only took two months to see the reaction of what I was doing, and it was like I'm actually capturing people, and that's what I needed to do. Let's take it back one second. How did you find out how to make, like, okay, so you're, this is a family tradition. Your yeah. father made pickles, yeah. right? But now you, how now are you making more? Stuff. Yeah, how, how did that even happen? Well, I was actually making... um in Connecticut with help from my dad at one point and bringing them back to Boston. Mm -hmm. And then when it got a little too much, I was just making them in my apartment. So on the low, yeah, I was doing it all illegally. But (laughs) we got legal once we started selling into Whole Foods and stuff like that. Sure. So take us back to, so a guy uh, that works for Whole Foods, what was his position? He was just a buyer and Okay, buyer. Yeah. Uh, Tasted the product. Tasted the product. How did you wind up finding this out? Like, meaning, how did it I got an email from, I had my emails and stuff on the cart, and it was an email from Whole Foods saying, love your product, love to discuss. And I'm like, whoa, never even been How do you reply back to that? Like, honestly, because I think... At the time, time, Pete, you're, you're kind of like... I, I was still thinking like it was like normal. So I was like, yeah, cool. I'll meet with you. So I show up as is. Like, I don't throw on a suit. I don't do none of that. I just show jersey, up. Jersey, sneakers. Yeah, yeah. Grillo's jersey, Grillo sneaker. And I just act like I can get everything done. And they're just like, well, do you have a box? You have to ship in a box. I'm like, no, but I have used pineapple boxes. So I was using wine. I was using. Uh, use pineapple boxes for probably the first six months selling into Whole Foods. So I was utilizing a free source of boxes to get into the distribution. Um, and then I had to get my own packaging to ship to the to the DC, which is the distribution center for Whole Foods. See, the biggest thing to me is is when someone has a passion and they want to turn it, you know, the the dream into reality. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you have so much energy and so much desire and so much determination, but you really don't know everything no. that's happening because sometimes it happens so fast. Yes. Like meaning getting a lawyer, copywriting yeah. things, um, yeah. you know, like you just said, production uh, uh, and, and, and packaging, you know, you, you didn't know this or where do you go? I mean, you could literally Google something and pick some up, but that may be the high price one. How, how did you learn things on the go? Like, how did you even... In trial and error. It was like... Um you start from, starting from the ground up. I started at a small uh, produce warehouse, Katsurubis Brothers. Mm-hmm. They're, they're Boston based. Um, they tried the product one day because I was buying raw ingredients from them when I was making them in the apartment. And they liked the product. They were like, dude, you're, you're the first guy I ever met to like do something OG. Like, you're making pickles. That's like the oldest thing you could do is like make pickles. True. Who would have thought of that? You know, um, when um, you say that Whole Foods contacted you, yeah. you get that account, how many stores did they put you in? The, that's, the, that's funny about you asking that. The, the thing was, they put me in one store, right? <laughs> what store? Fresh Pond store. It's down in Cambridge, a very busy store. Why that? Because like, it's their busiest store. Okay, they okay. thought it was a good thing. But this is, the, this is the funny part with Twitter and everything. I was savvy. I got in that one store. Next day, I drove to the next door, the next door, the next door, the next door. I bought a van next door, next door. I sold myself into about 18 stores, and then I Twitter, carts closed today. Carts carts closed today. Go to these stores. So I was using Twitter as my vehicle for getting people to the stores. Once they started selling out the stores, I get a call from corporate. You got to get to the office. Everything's illegal. Like everything I was doing was illegal. Like you got, you can't do that. It's against policy. All this. I'm like, oh shit, I don't know. But they're like, the good news is, you're fucking killing it. You're selling Mm. more product than half of these pickle brands that we've had for years. Mm. And I'm like, oh yeah, like oh man, shit. They're like, we want to put you into more stores. So they put me into the D.C., which opened me to 28 stores, and then that opened us into some of Manhattan, New York stores. Um. And, and and that and, was like my first real account. Then did you did you stop doing the cart once you got Whole Foods? No, account? I worked. I I hired who you met today. Shout mm-hmm. out Eddie. Yep. Eddie worked for me at the cart, so he was one of the ground zero guys, and uh, he started at the cart. And then I had Aaron Bedard, another guy. 
Um, but even though Whole Foods gives you, and at this point you're at like say 40 stores in Whole Foods, right? Yeah. Is that is that game changing to you where you where you you could just work on this? Or, well, or, or some people, yes, right. There's some people that might have a honey company or whatever company, and they love it, and you can definitely support. A, a, a lifestyle on maybe a Whole Foods region uh, or two with some small stores in between. But for Grillo's, I was... What was year was this start. when you got into Whole 2008. Foods? 2008. Okay. 2008, 2009. That you got in Whole Foods. Okay. Yeah. Now, today, how many stores are you in in Whole Foods? We're national. We're in every single Whole Foods in America. Goddamn. Yeah. We're in, and over, how, we're in, we're in over 7,000 stores. But that's not in. only the only place. This is what's amazing, too. You're not only... You're not, it's amazing <laughs> yeah. because... I remember when I was introduced, they sent me a package. This is so many years ago, and I really thought. And I'm not trust Bun anybody. Had too at the yeah, time. yeah Bun had them too. And and I'll tell you one thing. I was like, yo, this product is fucking good. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in front of you. No, no, no. It was good. And um, just to see where it is today is amazing. What other stores are you into? Uh, we're in Publix, full, Publix, full rotation, Kroger. Now, what does that mean, full rotation? Uh, that means we're in all 1,200 stores, just Publix. But how do you, as a businessman and, and with a product, and anybody out there listening that has a product that wants to get out there, how do you get into Publix 1,200 stores? Meaning like, because mm. they could have started you and say, listen, we're going to start you off with 100. How did mm -hmm. you, they just started off with 1,200? Yeah. Well, with our growth where we were with other supermarkets, like, say, the Kroger's, the Stop and Shops, the Shaw's, these are all, say, called uh, conventional stores. What the fuck is Kroger's? I never heard of Kroger's that. Kroger's is just in the Midwest, Cincinnati-based company. Okay, okay. Great company. Um, and they have... How many stores do they have? They they have over a thousand God, different, different, different brand labels, too. So they own Ralph's and some other grocery stores in Cali. So they're, be, they're a pretty big... Um, powerhouse grocery chain. Now, do you ever have any problems where, like, say, like a Kroger's would say, like, look, if you're dealing with Publix, I don't want to be bothered? Or yeah, there was a time where we had to be cautious about um, the Whole Foods relationships with the Kroger's or with whatever it is. But I think now we're all line pricing. Everybody's everybody's enjoying Grillo. So. The brand itself has shed shed the love that I've always dreamed for it to do. Like the the, the jar, the way it's presented, um, everybody loves Grillo, so there's not this whole price gouging. Everybody's happy to carry us, and Grillo's is no longer that brand that you got to be a Whole Foods customer to buy. I mean, it, it it's fair that everybody can enjoy it. You can go buy Cheerios and Wheaties and Grillo's pickles now. You don't have to buy the kale. And the you know the organic stuff just to get Grillos. So Grillos is now a household name. Now, what is the pickle culture? I mean, like, who <laughs> buys pickles? Like, like, I didn't know much about it when yeah. I started Grillos. Right, I was more in the sneaker. Call. I was more on your side. Right, I knew more about that um, getting into the business. But I learned really fast that the pickle business is, it is a billion dollar business total. Right, so in a total of it all, if you can scratch the surface of that, you're making money. Right, so it's a big business. Um, getting into it, Grillo's was a Italian fresh pickle, so you weren't you weren't necessarily disguising the pickle, right? You were you wanted people to taste the freshness, and that's when you were saying you tasted quality. It, it was something that um, most pickle people that would eat pickles ate all the store bought ones that were warm, sure, sure, that just tasted mushy and nasty, and that was never a pickle to me. Now, is it with foods? You know, people put pickles on, uh, you know, burgers, or was there anything else that you learned that people in the pickle culture? Yeah, they, some people only eat spears, some people only eat chips, some people only eat holes. So mm. that was a thing that, and some people won't eat sweet pickles, and some will only eat sweet pickles, and some will only eat dill. So there's a a weird genre around the flavoring and the cut of the pickle that i never thought existed so we had to kind of put out a chip we put out a sweet chip so we learned from this and put out products that would help us so how many products sales. do you have now you have the grillo's original italian uh, Dill, the hot and the, the sweet hot, and the, the sweet half sour and half sour and then we do them in chips too so other people that only eat chips are for burgers and now restaurants i think you sent me years ago you have tomatoes like yeah, we have specialty items. None of them are, are in supermarkets right now. Mm -hmm. um, we really wanted to concentrate on our base business for the first two, three years of this expansion because right now we're in a, in a fast growth s spot. Um, so right now we're just concentrating on five SKUs. That's five different pickles. Okay. So let's go back over. Uh, you're in Publix, Kroger's. You said Stop and Shop? Stop and Shop, Shaw's. 
I mean, those are conventional grocery stores. We're, okay. we're in a you know national Whole Foods. We're in a lot of mom, we're in PDQ. It's a fast food chain in Florida. Well, let's make it easier. How many stores are you in? Forget about over seven thousand currently. We're trending to be at seven thousand stores. From a fuck is that's amazing. From a and pickle? I started my first investment with Grillo's Pickles with five grand. Okay, which I made flipping. Real estate short selling properties back in the day. So your first Im- so so your first investment is <laughs> your first investment is five grand, and you would say you know the company's worth today. The the company yeah it started with five. The company's uh, evaluated over twenty million. Yeah, so so five. Uh, th- 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 let me tell you something. If someone could take that investment, the crazy thing to me is that people laughed at you. Yeah. Have you ever seen them again? Yeah, we go see them all the time and shake hands. And just, oh, it's oh. funny because they still say, I'll go down to Park Street and he'd be like, hey, man, how are the grocery sales doing? You, you, did you guys get it? You know, they, no one knows. And it's cool because I'm that the guy. Um, I don't, you know, I like what I like, right? And I might like nice things, but I've liked nice things before I had Grillo. So I've just, sure. I don't flaunt things or anything. I just shake hands and be like, yeah, man, we're doing good. Like, life's is good. I got kids and da da da. It's never like, you know, you don't need to know per se, but um, I'm growing a business that I think one day we could, you know, be number one net sales of the whole country. You know, yeah. we're, we're number in pickles. We're, yeah, we're about we're we're trending number two. Who is some competition? Um, there's some competition. Is Clawson owned by Kraft? Okay, we have competition with uh, Batente. They're owned in New York. Um, you know, there's some people that there's like I showed you a couple of brands that try copying us, and you know you got to deal with that when you succeed. See, that's uh, a great that's a great segue because how do you, okay we spoke a little bit before about this, but you know um, before off air we were talking about I actually if you had a business manager, mm-hmm. and uh, you said uh, you know that sometimes you used one, mm-hmm. and and the reason why I asked you that is because as this moves so fast, you need a lawyer, yeah. you need an accountant, yeah. you need you know. You have people trying to, you know, copy you or Mm. imitate your brand or use similar logos. Then, you know, how do you go about that? How do you go about even finding the right people? Is it just friends or word of mouth? Well, when I got introduced to um, a few guys through uh, Pete Lesko, who's who's an owner um, of Food Should Taste Good. It's a chip company from Needham, local guy. Um, When I first started Grillo's, I'm that guy that's going to reach out into that into that. Field. So I started calling local business owners and trying to meet with them. Like, hey, I'm Travis. I have a pickle cart. Got into Whole Foods. Will you talk to me? Simple human thing. And this guy, Pete, inter- took my phone call and we met and we talked. And then I met an accountant of his and an accountant of his introduced me to an investment firm. And an investment firm led me to where I am today. You know, I've, I've rolled with the same guy. So just like anything in life... I always feel like I have to trace back who I'm around, right? So <laughs> it's like an old thing. I don't know if my dad taught it for me or the streets, but it's just one of those things where, like, I wouldn't have messed with these guys if Pete didn't co-sign them and someone else co-signed sure. them. Because now, like you said, I have to trust financial advisors, attorneys, accountants, CFOs, presidents, um, you have to you have to build them relationships, but it, it all starts from the core. So, um, I like I like that I I know everybody in a in a chain of events. You know, you said something too to me that you, you try to put on everybody you know. You know, when you when, when you became more successful, when you started making more money, when the company become started to become a company, really yeah. not just a fucking pickle cart. Yeah. You know, you said you tried to put on uh, all your friends. And it's funny because I think all of us think like that. We, you know, it ain't no fun unless the homies have some. Yeah. You said that they don't, that don't work. Well, why is that? Cause well, like a lot of people helped me out, right? The friends and my good friends helped me out tremendously. But when I brought people into the manufacturing side of it, it's cold. It's really wet. It's long hours. Um, the work that I had to put in, the nights that my feet were so fucking freezing and, and falling off. Like, people can't ever say to me anything about, like, you ha- you're this. Like, I told you earlier, debt is debt, and, and like, that's how I choose it. No, like, right? it, So it's, like, one of those things. I was, I can always think back to where my feet were numb till 3 in the morning, and I had to sell pickles at 10 a.m., right? And ride my bicycle three miles to do that. 
but I did it because I just vi- envisioned in my head if I do this and make these pickles, I know they're selling tomorrow morning because I already know I'm hot. So it was like your friends start to be like, well, if I'm not getting in on it all or I'm fucking too cold, like you need to hire someone. You start getting all this information how other people would do it and then you no longer feel like you're the boss like you got too much going on yeah you have too much going on so um i think people like um things i don't think they always like to work yeah you know it's easy to pick something out off the shelf and like it but then to know that you had to work hard to get it and like we talked earlier out to denny once you have the money to get half this shit you don't want it of course and i (laughs) think and i think and i think you rather go listen to the waves at the beach and be like yeah this is this is it this is this is it this is why i worked hard my time is more valuable than half the shit on the shelf is your time sure time is money man time is like all you got so you know um you took a a a cart to nationwide sales you you literally changed your life all around i'm sure you know um monetary wise and just just everything else what can you say is is the biggest things that you learned throughout that time through through your successes and failures i think i think without failures you're not going to have success and what are some of your fails if my biggest failure was was probably not getting a job at nike right i mean who who doesn't want to design shoes right and now that i know a lot of shoe designers i get to see like it's just a job too right it's a great job but it is a job and you do have to go to work and you do have to clock in so you i didn't know that you know say eight years ago that's all i wanted so it took me a long time to get to the point where like i was saying time um the the failures of um you know not be not being able to do a lot of the things in boston because i was working making pickles at night right in my 20s like i wanted to do things i wanted to party i wanted to hang out i wanted to meet people and i didn't right I yeah the sacrifice the t- I, I, yeah i sacrificed we called it the pickle trap before even trap you trap we even pickles. heard about it yeah we didn't when they started saying trap music i was kind of like cool man i already heard trap from just i don't even know it was just part of something we always talked it was something that was always in my growing up like that's, sure it was just so we just joked around and called it the pickle trap because that's all we had i had a fi- uh, i had a fridge just full of pickles mm. and the sacrifice of not eating because I had pickles and I'd eat takeout or just dumb little shit like that makes you realize how hard you worked to get where you are because you sacrifice everything. Like I didn't watch TV for probably a year and a half. I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch it. I didn't own a TV Mm. um, because I didn't want to be distracted by the noise Mm. because you hear the noise on channel five news and that's not usually half the truth and it's not in front of you. Mm. So th- those failures are like the success is without without it. I don't think I would have been here today. If everything was easily handed to me, you wouldn't appreciate it. And like I said, we're we're consistently, you know, getting money from banks. Like it's a whole different way of sticking and moving now. Like now, it's a whole other thing. You got to gain your credit. Ten years of business gives you really good. Credit. Wait, we got to find out about that. You know what? Let's take a quick break. Uh, we're sitting here with Travis Grillo breaking down uh, the success of a pickle cart to a nationwide million dollar fucking business, which is amazing to me. It's still amazing to me. People laughed at you, and I think you're laughing all the way to the top, you know? So, Internet, so listen, grab yourself a pickle. Get, try and get yourself a Grillo pickle. Don't get the competition. Don't disrespect that man right now. Go out and get yourself a Grillo pickle. We'll be right back. You listen to the Premium P Show. Cheer. Internets. This is Mikey from Mikey Likes It Ice Cream, and you are now listening to the Premium Peach Show. Internet, and we're back sitting here with my man Travis Grillo, the founder and CEO, yes, right, yes. of Grillo Pickles. This story, like I said, is amazing to me. Uh, you know, just a pickle cart, a five thousand dollar investment into a multi million dollar company now. Um, just breaking down the ups, the downs, and and what it takes to really make it. Not only in the pickle business, just just being an entrepreneur. I said this to you before, and I was like, yo, how many times did you want to quit? Yeah. M- meaning, thinking some of these days, at, you know, this shit is not going to work, or it's not really panning out to be... How many times did you want to quit? I want... I, honestly, like, it was... I said I'm going to sell it all probably uh, 20 times. Mm-hmm. 50, you know, Why is that? Like, what, what, what? You know, there's days that go... You know, there's just big things that could happen. It could be a, a quality issue. It could be shortage of cucumber. It could be dill. It could be there's a there's a lot of things that go into manufacturing food, where you get frustrated. Um, 
and with Grillo's, since the heart is involved, which I suggest to anyone listening, you know, you sometimes want to separate the love of your business. Don't fall in love with your business. Like, love your business, but falling in love with it can really be tragic because it's hard to let go, right? So mm. Grillo's was one of those things that I'm at the point where I'm ready to like, I'm treating it as a, as a business. It's a, it's a business. It's a vehicle to feed me and my family to help 60 plus employees, you know, feed their families. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a corporation now that, that started from nothing. And I think that's what stands for Grillo's. Um, that's, that, that's what I want that brand, whether I own it or someone else owns it one day or buys it or wherever, whatever we do, with the company, if I grow it, if I give it to my son, I think it's just one of those things that it, it's a, it stands for a lot more than just the pickle. How could something that changes your life uh, affords you the opportunity to provide for your family um, make you want to quit on it? Right? And, I, yeah. and, and, and you see that so often. Yeah. But I ask somebody who's exactly in it. Yeah. I, th- I, think, it, I think sometimes you'd... For me, it's like I get to the point where I'd rather fail than sell out, per se, right? Mm. Some days you just want to stay so true to what you started, what your family or, your, you know, my cousin and Eddie and people expect. And you want to give up them days that you're like, wow, I had to take a corporate stance because <clears throat> somebody wanted to say I'm not doing this right because the corporate way or issue is the right way. And that's the hardest part about this business world is, yeah, you have to conform to some sense, but being me being who I am and continuing to be the CEO without changing appearance, vibes, anything, it, it, I put people in a situation sometimes to make them feel uncomfortable to get the fucking job done. Mm. Because what does this, that mean? It, right? How did, this, how did, give uh, us an example. His example would be, you know, I'm not wearing a suit and tie every day. Mm. I'm not conforming to how I got successful. I wore a friggin' custom made jersey that I bought with my first four hundred dollars making Grillo's pickles and went to Philadelphia and I had it custom sewn and that was like my trophy. And that trophy that I wore around my my body. Sure. I still wear to meetings today because that was my trophy and and it was custom made for me and it was a jersey a basketball jersey because I felt that's what I wanted to wear and that's what I wanted to design and I was selling pickles on the street in Boston so I might as well look like a Celtics player (laughs) and made it all Celtics Grillo's Pickles logo hey I you know I I find that funny that you say um, about you know being corporate Mm. and then you know, remaining yourself. Yeah. You go into meetings. I remember you telling me before, you go into meetings, um, you have 60 plus employees, you have a multi-million dollar company yeah. and they look at you like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, you're the CEO. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. you, you ever like smile when you feel that? <laughs> because let me tell you something, to me is, you know, um, and I haven't got there financially, but I understand it mentally. Yeah. To live your dream as yourself has to be the best feeling in the world. Yeah. You know, because you're not changing up anything. No. You're not trying to be anyone. You're, you know, you're being accepted yeah. for who you are, and you're being rewarded for who you are. You yeah. know, what, what I take from that is now I can help other people, and that's a bigger reward because now I can just boom, 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 five more people, and then five people can tell five more people, and then next thing you know, you have a hundred people. They are now entrepreneurs that now started their, their success from just learning about it. So how does it go corporate? Take us through where you start to hire. Corporates, when you start hiring um, board of directors, when you start hiring presidents, when you start hiring CFOs. And, and what I did was I went and found some of the best people that worked in the natural How do you do channel. that? All networking through the original meeting i was telling you guys earlier with the accounting firm Mm. so that one accounting firm linked me with investors and then as you go through that years go by you're able to network with other brands in the natural food channel that have been super successful Mm. so you put them in place hey i used to sell chips or i used to sell uh, natural gummy bears and now i'm selling pickles so these people come in and help companies like us grow 
How do you how do you know like even what to like pay some of these people? It's just like an average. Yeah, you know, it's an a- yeah. You're talking like an average income of, you know, it, you know whatever. Yeah, all different, yeah, yeah, all different yeah, salaries. Yeah, every different level. But now, some of my, now, the funny part of this, uh, Pete, is the the most impactful workers are the fifty plus that work in the stores across my across the country. Some who I've never met mm, personally. Mm, mm. Now, let me ask you: you you say um, that you would like to sell it one day, right? Mm. Have you ever thought about what you want to do next, even while you're doing what you're doing now? Yeah, I, I mean, like you just visited uh, the vintage store. Okay. <laughs> and that was like... Vintage Gucci. Yeah, yeah, some of the rarest pieces in the Northeast. Uh, no, I I think, you know, the, the shoes I have on, no one, uh, Jimmy Garecki, works okay. for them. Like, I love what they're doing. Like, I'd love to get involved with any startup, one to two year, three year company that maybe needs to get to the next level. And maybe I come in as a, you know, investor slash uh, influence, whatever it could yeah. be. Uh, designer. Uh, I love Consult- textile. Could be a consultant. consultant. Yeah. You know, I'm getting, I'm 36 now. So I feel like I'm at that level where people will start taking you, <laughs> you know, you'll get taken seriouser as you get older with more knowledge and what you've been through. And Grillo's has given me that platform now that I've succeeded. And like, shout out to Nike. They should have hired me, but maybe not, right? Because I would have been really successful with them. I would have grown their brand. I was dedicated. Yeah, but you could have been laid off. And I could have been laid off. And that doesn't come until now, right? That didn't come until Grillo's was already flourishing. And I I started seeing people wear my shirts because I was selling so much merchandise that the Pickle logo started becoming its own thing and really popular. Um. And you said you told me you wouldn't if Gorillas wasn't popping, you wouldn't be in Boston. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm I'm from Connecticut. I just feel like shout out to Boston. I love it. That's my that's my home, right? That's that's where I'm. But as you can see, I'm an island life guy. Like I want to be in the warm weather. I love the beach. Um, my buddy moved to the Grand Cayman. Shout out to Ryan Mush right after college. Well, after you know, after living in Cali, and. uh being open to the Caribbean lifestyle, it's like what we talk about here is great because we grew up around it and we're so fast moving New Yorkers, people from the Northeast. And you get out there and we and, and after three weeks, we start itching again. So I don't know how I would react full time, but maybe with Grillo's success one day, I'll be able to get a spot down there. And I think uh, try to maintain what I'm going to do on this the, side. The next chapter, have yeah. you um, invested in any property? Do you have any advice for people who are starting to make money with yeah. their business that yeah, definitely what to do with spend it. it. <laughs> <laughs> don't Why do you say on that? It. Why do you say that? It. Why do you uh, say that? Cuz it's like you just said real estate assets like there's there's the the more, the better credit you have is the is is key, right? The you know, the more people will let you borrow and things like that to get creative is important. Um and real estate is key, you know. Um buying not renting eventually but renting works too because renting gets you through and and can maintain you you can write it off there's so many benefits of renting so everyone's different right the the, the suggestion i can make is just be happy Mm. whatever you're doing like just because your friends will say oh you move to the suburbs that's like you're like what and it's like yeah i'm like 15 seconds off mass ave and either either way or you're 50 minutes it doesn't matter like you start doing things for like me, my kids. Mm. You know, I have two kids, six and two. So, I wanted them to like be able to walk to school and do things like that. So to do that, you have to make sacrifices and changes. But with that, I think comes happiness. You know. Well, I think running a business and creating a business from the ground up definitely takes sacrifices. Yeah. You have seen many of them over time. Um, I want you to take the time to offer some advice to anyone listening. Um, that wants to start a business that uh, has ideas of doing or is doing it at a low level and feels yeah. like probably giving up. What's some advice you could give them? I would say take risks. Definitely take as many risks as possible. Do things until you're so not to. Um, a lot of times people want to get too much information, man. If you think about half the shit, the new fad has already come. You know, like don't don't be a copycat. Be original. Um, and believe in yourself, you know, don't believe in what other people are in your ear telling you it, it, it's, 
it's one of those things like I was telling you earlier about distributing. It's like distributors fight over, you know, pickups of pickles and like who's making it's just like ridiculous to me. I just want to like sell sure. my pickles. And sure. then when you see an Amazon come and buy Whole Foods and everybody gets mad, well, they're cut they're making it, you know, eventually it might be a world where we only ship to one person. Right now I have to ship to you know, I have a whole logistics of trucking. I ship over two hundred trucks, trailer trucks a fucking month. Yeah. The logistics on two that many trailer trucks with temp control is all involved with selling a plastic jar. So You know, like when intense. when you say that, you know, I, I can't get this out of my head of a pickle cart. So I think of a pickle <laughs> cart to two hundred what'd you say, two hundred million? No, no, like tractor trucks. Oh, 200 tra- trucks yeah, like tractor, full a month. Yeah, yeah. But you think about that. That's a, a lot. Yeah, you see tractor trucks driving on 95, right? Yeah, There's yeah. 200 of those per month back and forth all over. Drop from, off, pick from up. From a of pickle pickles. car <laughs> that got laughed at by people. When you think about that, the yeah. fucking shit is crazy. Have you been able to enjoy some of the success? Like take time to celebrate it? Because some people, they want to wait until they get to this highest level that may never come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Have you been able to enjoy it? I, I think... Um, and, and, and able, celebrate your victories. Huh? Well, like being with my being with my family and my kids since we we were talking earlier from birth till my son's six and my daughter's two. Like I've been here with them days days like on end, and that's like in itself. And then being able to travel to the Caribbean, I was in Trinidad. Mm. You know, Trinidad was like life changing for me. Sure. Like, I want to go back there. I want to like bring the root tonics and things that I drank out there into the mainstream. Um, like I want to do things like that because that's what makes me happy. It's not because it's going to make me money. If anything, I'm going to make someone else money. That makes me happy to make you money. That's all I want to do. What's really. what, what's some of the things that you've been able to buy that? Uh, you know that you weren't able to buy as a young kid. You know that you, you know through some of the successes. That you, palm tree you just seen in my fucking. Okay. <laughs> to where be the, able to have a palm tree in Massachusetts is a huge fucking. What way the fuck did they ship that in from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that seems like a fucking drop off <laughs> off a fucking truck. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you one thing though. Wait, when you come to Mass, no one has a palm tree in their house. How about that? Hey, listen, that's a special thing. No, yeah, that you know we speak. We speak about your father, and as yeah. we wind this episode down, we speak about your father. Um, you said your father built, you know, batteries, put them together, sold yeah. them. Um, I remember you telling me he was a stubborn guy. You yeah. know, d- you know, <laughs> still is. is it, you know, um, part of the reason why you wanted to start Grillos and become successful is because you were saying you didn't want to be like. No disrespect to your dad, but you didn't want to be like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to. Um, you know, when when I was going to go into college, my dad kind of said I was wimping out kind of thing like you're being you're being a wimp you're gonna go to college like who does that like and i was like really and i'm like well i'm gonna go because i went and shit the parties were popping and you know i wanted to learn too but i also in the the end it was like it was more attracted when you went there than when you even thought what college could be Mm. it was it was it was a good time but yeah i didn't want to be i want to i am like my dad i have his morals um he played football, so I grew up around all different types of people at a young age. So I wasn't like segregated from any type of anyone. So I grew up with all different loves and likes of everything, food, culture. And my dad brought that to the table, which was awesome. But when it came to like me moving on, he wanted me to like get a job at the like at the grocery store, the produce aisle, and like work my way up to manager. And I'd be like, yo, not that that's not a good thing, but I just see bigger things for me and I want to go to college. Because I felt like that was the move. And then after five years of college, not getting the job that you just fucking sacrificed five years for, it really set me back to a fury where I was rebelling against corporate america in my fucked up head per se right i was like i'm gonna sell these pickles and show everybody that you could do this it's ground up Mm. and that's like what i want gorillas to be known for too like it's the story that about this product where it is and like why it is as big as it is did your father when you were selling the pickles did your father um did he foresee what you foresaw? You know, meaning like, did he be like, eh, son, you know, it's so nice to sell the pickle, but... Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah. hey, he said, um, you should just sell it to 
the farmer, Travis. The farmer knows everybody. And I'm like, Dad, the farmer has one place and one <laughs> shop down the street. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but Vinny knows everybody. What have you been able to do for Pops, you know, and your, and your moms? That, that, you know, because yeah, I think that's amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. when a, a, a son is able to yeah. do more yeah. than what the parents have been able yeah. to do for you. What well, have the, you been? The what, fir- yeah. the, one of the first things I did when I was able to, I just redid their bathroom because it was like the original bathroom that like he, my dad grew up in. So he took shits in the bathroom. <laughs> well, yeah, he he the house that my dad ended up getting when my grandfather passed. So he mm. grew up in that house. So he lives now still in the same house he grew up in. Mm. OG OG. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, in the I garden know. where they'll never gri- move. You no, know, in the garden that the Grillos was made out of is in the backyard. So we just got done filming for PDQ, a fast food chain down in Florida, because they do a bunch of business with us and. uh it was like in the backyard of my dad's and like coming from Florida up, it was a big like, what the fuck? This is crazy. Like this is real Northeastern Italian cats. And what, uh, they enjoyed it. What did he say to you when, um, you know, that he's seen it successful? Like what was that point? I know you said that quality. he Quality. Said- Just all about quality. No, but what, what what did he say to you when he seen that you became real successful? The quality. He's like, I don't, you know, he don't care about the money. It was all about quality. He's like, if you let that quality slip, if you change the ingredients and all this shit and like and then i'd get phone calls yeah the pickles look fucking different colors and all this but he has to understand now is that we're buying so many cucumbers and they're grown naturally they're gonna have different shades the sun comes up the sun goes down it rains like this is this is godly man the pickles are grown from the earth and you know we laugh about like the temperature change i don't laugh about it but it's a real thing i mean i rely on nature to make this product work and if you want to risk something that's risk man i'm risking you know the 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 sun coming up and coming down every day for me to make money because if it doesn't i'm i'm in trouble right i I need pickles to be grown (laughs) what's next for grill pickles ah man i think we're going to be you know i'm trying to get the business to where you're going to be able to get it in every possible supermarket uh, retailer in the country. And I want you to be at a checkout in Target and, sli- and, and slide a dollar pickle spear wrapped up like a string cheese. You know, mm. I want to bring pickles to a snacking, easy, uh, fat-free way to eat. Like, we went and ate Vietnamese food today, and everybody got up. I'm like, man, I feel full, but I feel good. And I bet sure, sure. still feels the same way. And I think Grillo's is that product. You can eat 10 of them and not feel like you just ate a shitload of nasty pickles. It's a mm. fresh experience. Mm. And mm. that's why I want to continue to move with it. Yeah. It's important. I think it's important to, uh, you know, know what you want to see for the future with the company. And, yeah. And, and, and really not get... Um, I guess complacent because you know it's like you think about it you have a successful company you could really just be like all right every day we're making money and this is what we're doing and you know you got to yeah. push yourself to be even even further you know yeah yeah every day every day you got to push yourself that's got to be tough sometimes you know well I'm getting older right um I'm in 35 I'm 35 now but I just feel like there's a lot of creative things I like um in the fashion world in the shoe world and I just feel like music, like I, I, I'm, I'm big into reggae and I like went to the orchestra and I was like thinking to myself, yo, I want to be able to conduct like a reggae slash orchestra in Boston pop, but make it using people that I found or we found and like made it acoustic style. And that was like something that happened. And now because I'm Grillo's, I got the meeting at Boston Pop. Mm. And I actually got a conductor, like, super into it. And I'm sitting there, and I leave, and I'm like, what the fuck did I get myself into? I really want to do this, but I got to fly here. I got to fly here. And then these guys are telling me it's a whole year just to train these people, but if, I love it. And I'm just thinking, like, wow, man, the power of me doing something successful with Grillo's got me to take serious sure. about this music idea when I don't have a musical background. Sure. <laughs> but I, other than what I love to hear and listen to and how I've grown up. so That's why I say, you know, um, one business could springboard off of another. Yeah. Um, lastly, before we go, um, I always love to think into the mind of an entrepreneur, a freelancer, um, a creative. What's your rut- daily routine like? Like, 
t- t- tell the <laughs> internet what you're when you wake up. What time do you wake up in the morning? Well, I have two kids, so I'm up at seven every okay. day, and I like to, uh, you know, get up. I go for about twenty. 25 mile bike rides mm-hmm. um every, every other day uh prior to that i was a big in the running i'd get run for you know five six ten miles every other day uh but then i hurt my back so definitely getting the blood flowing in the morning um fuck with some bob marley um definitely reggae every morning mm-hmm. get my kids ready cook them breakfast and if it's school season, we go into the school. Um, love to hit the beach, bring the family down to the beach, and then, you know, hit the city and just see people that I want to, you know, talk to. Um, that's about it, man. In the that's office, an average I, day. What about at night, closing out the, the day? Closing out the day, man. I be, sometimes be in the office a little bit. Once or twice a week, I get in the office, have meetings. Ru- that runs into the evening. Um, you know, go out to eat. If I can, Vietnamese food is one of my favorites. Um, just staying focused, man, full time. It's been it's been one of them creative things. Uh, you've been in my house. It's it's a creative capsule for me. Um, I got tons of different things I'm doing with clothing. I got a Terry short uh, experiment I'm sewing out in Philly. So I have that going on and just uh, maintaining. I paint. You know, I have artwork that I love to paint. Nice stress release. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's important to do that. Listen, um, on social uh, at Grillo Pickles and Twitter and Instagram, both yep. at Grillo Pickles, GrilloPickles dot com. Yep, check them out. But you're not selling anything online, right? No, no. You can get it. You can get the store list online. You can get them everywhere nationally. Just check your store list location. It'll pop up where you could get them. Listen, internets, if you fuck with pickles, okay? Uh, pause if you think this is pause worthy. But if you fuck with pickles, I want you to go out and check that out. Not only because if you like pickles, but just to understand. Um, how this kid, Travis Grillo, took a pickle cart, uh, was laughed at in, in downtown Boston into a multi, multi-million dollar company that employs over 60 people, is able to live his life, live his dream, provide for his family, and maybe set up his future for what's next. Uh, I think it's inspiring. Um, I think it, it it's something that we could learn from him. And I wish you all the best, Travis. And, 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 and you know, um, I I really think that the world needs more, uh, not only success stories, but the, the world needs more um, stories of success to learn from. Because, you know, you think about it, you know, um, you didn't know what to do in certain cases, but maybe if you would have had somebody. But now you're sitting here telling me that because you have cosigns of people or people gave you cosigns of other people, yeah. you were able to build things off of that. And I think that's what this world is about. Yeah. So. You know, uh, thanks for doing this episode. I, me, I definitely, like I said, I definitely think it's a great success story. And uh, listen, internet, you fuck with pickles, get to grow with pickles. If you don't, I hope you enjoyed these gems. Add them on Twitter, add them on Instagram. Let them know what you think of the pickles or let them know what you thought of the episode. I want to shout out my guy D Wells in the building. My guy Sneaker Box Clyde, newbie in handling the audio out here, the official uh, Numinati. Um, we'll see you next episode. Travis Grillo. Cheer. Incidents, if you enjoyed that episode, I want you to reach out to me. Email me. Tweet me, okay? Email the premium Pete Show at gmail.com. At Twitter, at premium Pete, at premium Pete Show on Instagram, at premium Pete, at premium Pete Show also. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you didn't like. And also, to all my small businesses or big businesses, no matter how small or big you are, you want to advertise with the premium Pete Show? Get at me. The premium Pete Show at gmail.com, and we'll figure something out, okay? Now, make sure you subscribe, rate, and tell a friend to tell a friend. And I'll see you next episode. Cheer.